Welcome into the Online Enquirer podcast. I did not uh, imagine doing this July 1st at 9 p.m., an emergency podcast. And we needed to delay this a little bit because uh, I was thinking I could enjoy a day. Uh, I went to a baseball game, went with a wife, surprised her, spontaneous guys, and uh, something breaks during this. And, and, and thankfully, you guys were on it. Derek Piper and Joey Wagner. But Kofi Coburn, uh, I expected to have a Kofi Coburn pod at some point to talk about him going into the draft or maybe he returns at some point, uh, but he enters his name into the transfer portal. I go for one day, guys. What the heck, Derek? <laughs> what, what happened here? Somehow I was able to get married and go on a honeymoon and, and do a bachelor party and no third assistant or anything like that. I was just asking for it. Not that I, I did take a Vegas trip one time and Jeremiah Tillman got out of his letter of intent. So I've experienced this. Uh, but it, it is just crazy how um, it just just be any time and maybe the most inconvenience of times. What was your reaction, Derek? Because I mean, I didn't hear anything about this. I'm assuming you didn't hear anything about this. I had not heard anything about this. No, there, there was some talk here recently about Kofi considering returning to college and what steps would have to be taken to kind of get rid of the fact or, or to make up for the fact that he sold his gear. Uh, getting a waiver through the NCAA and the NIL now that's getting all this buzz and uh, becoming, I mean, it's a real thing. Uh, it, it's gotten his attention for sure. And now the feedback, when you compare that with, you know, the G league camp, not getting invited to the NBA combine, look, we, we fully expected, I think all of us would have thought probably sometime around now we'd be having a Kofi conversation about his, him making a decision. The difference is, the steps along the way he seemed not to want to wait that long or he already had made his decision. Uh, so it's kind of, it's gotten all complicated and, and, and kind of a little messed up. And, and now with the transfer portal, uh, it's got a lot of fans on edge and understandably so because it just has a lot of people scratching their heads and asking a lot of questions. Yeah, Joey, because it felt like the, the two things that could happen potentially are, Oh, great. Kofi Coburn comes back. And I think we thought that was a pretty small chance, right? Based on how he's acted, what he said in recent weeks, selling gear, things like that. And then there was the other part. Oh, he goes and plays pro and they honor him at State Farm Center next year. I don't think any of us were prepared for he transfers to another school. Yeah, I don't think that was an option. I looked at a week ago and thought, okay, you know, like for us, you want to get ahead and have some stories written like Kofi comes back, Kofi goes to school. I don't think any one of us would have thought like Kofi enters the transfer portal should be something to consider. It it, it does tell us a lot. And one tweet from Andrew Slater that kicked this whole thing off is like Derek said, there's interest in coming back to school, right? I mean, you don't set off a, a bit of a storm like this if – if you just plan on staying in the NBA and, and look, we have to acknowledge it's still possible. He's going to stay in the NBA draft that, that's on the table for him. It is on the table for him to elect to return. As Derek mentioned, there, there are some hoops that are going to need to be jumped through. I, I would think in terms of the player's trunk to make that happen. And, and, but that's the same as if he elects to go and transfer elsewhere. I, the NIL thing, this whole thing is, is interesting on so many levels, but I wonder you have a potential face of college basketball who is interested in coming back to college. I mean, we can at the very least say he's interested in some capacity of coming back. And he made these moves a month before the college landscape kind of got flipped upside down. I mean, how big of a fight is that if you're the NCAA? Are there other rules that, that would fall in line in terms of selling his gear? I don't know. But to me, if you're the NCAA and, and the Supreme Court looked at you three weeks ago and said, hey, guys, this isn't what you're doing is not it. We'll get to you at some point, but this is not it right now. Is it worth that fight? I don't know. There are so many questions that I don't think we have the answers to right now, but I think the biggest thing I keep asking myself is why, why would he enter the transfer portal? So the number one thing is why would he consider after saying, I'm not coming back right to, to Marley, we're at a WCIA and saying he's all in on the NBA draft. Why would he decide then that's not where he's going? And it'd be because he's not getting drafted. I mean, Kofi Coburn is very unlikely to be drafted. I mean, I know a couple people have had him in mock drafts, but when you don't get invited to the NBA draft combine after a G league where I thought he was solid, but I thought it also showed the flaws we all thought he had for that next level. Um, he's probably not getting drafted. He might have a chance to be in the G league. Uh, he definitely certainly could go overseas and make money, but I mean, 
he might be able to make the most money in college and, and, and coming back and get a degree and uh, maybe he doesn't want to go to school, but th there's a lot of money to be made. As you said, Joey, as one of the faces of college basketball, but Derek, I would have thought most of that value is at Illinois where you're already a legend. Uh, not that he couldn't make money at, you know, people speculate Kentucky because Orlando Antigua or wherever he would go, he'd be a star. He'd be one of the best players in college basketball, but I feel like at Illinois, where he's built this brand the last two years, that's where, one, you'd think the best fit for him because he's comfortable there. He's playing with Andre Corbello. But two, just because of the brand he's already built there. That's why I'm confused of why he would want to go anywhere else but Illinois. Yeah, and like you said, that makes a ton of sense on why it would be Illinois and why a lot of fans would think it, it would be as well if he were to come back to college. But to your point, the feedback clearly is from enough people that there's a strong enough possibility that you're not going to get drafted. There, there's some that some buzz out there that he might not even be guaranteed a starting spot in the G league next year. And that's something that probably uh, obviously scares him a little bit or, or just has his attention. And, and like you said, uh, with NIL and just the, the magnitude of it and being, we, we don't know what that ceiling is ultimately for the top level, most attractive, most marketable athlete would be, but for Kofi at Illinois with the pre-established brand and just in college basketball in general, it's got to be pretty high. Uh, now, I think we're it, talking uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is obviously substantial. And then a chance, and, and, no, wherever you stand on how much can he further improve his stock? Is he ever going to be a fit in the NBA, the modern game? Uh, there is an opportunity maybe potentially to, to I don't know that the jump is going to be like IO from, second round into no doubt first round or whatever it might be for IO. Um, but yeah, to, to make that money, to, to further get an education, there are, you could, you could convince yourself or, or make a case for why Kentucky makes sense. Obviously with Orlando Antigua, the guy that recruited him, developed him, uh, Kentucky just be, again, being Kentucky. And I, I know we've probably said that line way too many times here throughout the summer because of Orlando and Chin, but um, yeah, uh, it, or, Andre he, would still make, here. he would certainly make money at Kentucky too, right? Yeah, <laughs> it yeah, would be an issue with that fan base. Right. Curbelo's here, played for Brad. A lot of good pieces are still here. You come back to the preseason Big Ten player of the year. Illinois is a top 15 preseason type team. Chance to do a lot of really good things. I, I understand, again, why you'd ask the question. Uh, but it's kind of like in that NBA mode where a star has an opt-out clause and you – doesn't mean he's not going back to where he was, but he now has all options on the table and you got to, you got to do the convincing yet again, which is a lot for those coaching staffs. Um, but, and, and a lot for those fan bases, but that's kind of where we're at now. Joey, it is, as Derek's kind of pointing to, it's kind of what today is like we, this is the part of player freedom, right. And player empowerment and fan bases might not like it, but now these players are more free, like the NBA players they adore uh, and model themselves after to where they can make a move like this. And I, I, I wouldn't really agree with Kofi. Like, and I'm usually a player and hey, do what you want to do. And he can do what he wants to do. It just doesn't make a lot of sense on the surface to me, but he can do that now. Like it, this is a new day with the one-time transfer rule. And of course with NIL and everything that comes with that too. Yeah. Much to the chagrin, I think of a lot of Illinois fans who, who saw this news today and, and wonder that it, it, it would be curious if he decided when we, if he's this close, I mean, a week ago, he wasn't coming back, right? I mean, he, he could not have been more clear. So you wonder how much longer would he have interest in playing college basketball? Is it worth kind of, I say starting over, but if you're Kofi, you don't really have to start over in terms of a brand, right? I mean, a little bit, but, but you're pretty well. I mean, your, your floor is a lot higher than I think than a lot of people. So if it's just one year, is that something that interests you? I mean, he's not going back to a team that with him would be projected to finish in the bottom of the conference. I mean, with him, as Derek mentioned, you're a preseason top whatever team. He's the Big Ten player of the year. He's, he's probably in a conversation for national preseason player of the year, at least in the top five or ten, whatever the case may be. So does it make sense to go elsewhere and do that? I don't know. But if you're him, I, you want to find the best option, I suppose. And do you really want to – with one day left, I mean, he, he made this announcement, what, four o'clock guys, something along those lines. So really eight hours left. 
after that eight hour span, he has two options. It's Illinois or the NBA or I should say Illinois professional career. So basically he just got out and expanded his mm-hmm. option list, which is one thing. And there's, I, I've all, I wish we could have had in person last year because I, I really wanted to ask Io this. And, and I'm curious of how it applies to Kofi. He has been in NBA mode. I, I mean, this is like, I am going professional. This, how hard is it to flip the switch back? Right. I, I like that's something I never none of us had to decide like how to do that, but how do you do that? What what is the does that play into anything in terms of if he does decide to come back? There's just so many things, but I kind of like I, I'm with you, Jeremy. I don't know if I if I understand all like the pieces, but I kind of get it. I mean, you had eight hours and, and basically you just made yourself a map of the country. And and if you're Kofi, you can point to something and say, That's my place. And you, you substantially broadened every horizon. Yeah, so I want to get into the potential of coming back to Illinois. That is still on the table for him. But there are two things that like I we don't have the answers to and we're looking into them. But one is the player's trunk selling gear. Like he did that before NIL became a thing. And will the NCAA just be like, okay, that was a month before, or will there be issues with that? We're not quite certain yet, it feels like. And then two. Uh, NIL, we've kind of got some mixed things of we've heard from Illinois at certain points that international students cannot make money off NIL based on their visas because that would make them not students, but employees. And that's not a part of their, you know, visa to be over here. Like Andre Corbello is from Puerto Rico. He's an American citizen. He can make off NIL, but like Benjamin Bossman's Verdonk, it's not clear. Kofi Coburn being from Jamaica, it's, it's not clear, but then the NCAA said, yes, they can, if it works with their visa. So Joey, we're not, we're not clear on either of those things at this point. Uh, we we're looking into them, but it feels like uh, even Illinois is still looking into these things. Right. So the, I think there's, there's some sort of conversation going on, and I'm sure Illinois is not alone in this, with the Department of Homeland Security to try to understand what this looks like for international players. But this isn't just an Illinois thing. I mean, th- these visas are, are across the board here for what it is. And then that comes into question, is NIL a job, right? Is that a, you know, uh, you don't punch the clock with NIL, but if you do the same thing every week, does it? So there's so many things and it's, I mean, literally now I'm not 24 hours old yet, right? So there's a lot of questions still out there, but there's it feels like there's a lot of layers to this guy. Like there's yeah. so many different layers. Which is why, you know, the rush to this, like that deserves criticism. Like Josh Whitman said, we're putting the plane together as we take off, right? We're still figuring this thing out. Okay, Derek, like he could go elsewhere. He could stay pro. What do you think are the chances that he could come back to Illinois after all of this? I mean, um, I'll, I'll get into another topic after this if he does go elsewhere, but what are the chances he can come back? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I think the, the fact that there is a chance that he comes back at the very surface or however, whatever angle it is to look at it, that out of today's news is a positive. I, I think that. Yeah. Can, seeing, I, can I say this? Like, it feels like the odds of him coming back to Illinois are higher than they were last week. It is right. as that is. It's been last night. Yeah, that, right. <laughs> it is funny that transfer portal, which makes everyone freak out and think about uh, what, what negative or, or just how upset people would be if it was another spot in the NCAA that it wasn't Illinois but the fact is that shows a sign that he is giving a serious look to college one thing I would say about the players trunk and I don't want to try to act like I I know what the NCAA is going to do or anything like that that would be dangerous but I know that from Illinois perspective us you know coaches that are trying to talk to him about coming back and what that would look like and the steps that it would take I've heard the expectation is you need a waiver need to probably pay the money back and might serve a little bit of a suspension, but they would expect him to be uh, available to play. Now, would that be in an Illinois Jersey? We'll see. I I don't know. I think the Kentucky angle is is really interesting. And what would be Orlando Antigua's personal approach Would his interests as a guy that might want to say, you know, I, I kind of, I left on good terms. Uh, I I told them that I wasn't going to pull Curbelo. I wasn't going to touch Kofi how much different is that versus Calipari in the year? Like, Hey man, we really need to win this year. And uh, I mean, if his boss, yeah, if his boss comes to him and says that guy, we can get a uh, likely consensus first team all American on my team next year. What are you yeah. doing with me? Like, why did I bring you to Orlando? Right. Yeah. That's tough. That's tough to gauge. I would still say my expectation would still be if he comes 
back to college, right at this very moment, I would pick Illinois at this point. I, I that would just be my my gut feel or read or, or trying to figure this thing out. But you do have to ask the question of why are you in the portal? Why why did conversations with Illinois here recently as they're talking and, and noticing that you're considering coming back? Why isn't it just automatic? You know that spot on that map, like Joy was talking about, where you're going to have your Jersey in the rafters. Why would you not come back to that place automatically? Uh, that is a question. UConn is another place that was a fi- was one of the two finalists for him. Uh, they they could be in the mix, but again, you're a free agent. You're going to be having these these meetings or talking to coaches, Zoom meetings, whatever they may be. He could take official visits. Like that is crazy to think about, uh, and what's going to come here and, and, and potentially in the coming weeks. So that that's nuts. And no one's missing that big boy on campus. Right? <laughs> no one's going to be able to keep that under the radar. Um, this is just me personally. And I'm usually so pro player. And if, and if you want to go find something new and, and better, like e- even with Adam Miller, I could understand, you know, Hey, there's a, there's a guy that's going to play a league guard role in Andre Corbell. And I'm not going to be that guy. And that's my ticket to the NBA. I, I don't understand Kofi going elsewhere. I, I don't. And, and I think, uh, you know, Kentucky, bright lights. He's got that at Illinois. Like they were the number one seed in the country. He's a second team All American here. Uh, and the other part of this is, is I hate usually getting caught up in this, but legacy, man. Like he is, he is a legend at Illinois. And if he came back for a third year, he'd be just as legendary as Io DeSumo. I, I think he's hand in hand with Io with what they did the last couple of years. But the potential to, to kind of, have that have a pockmark if he leaves and, and plays for, for someone else, even though Illinois didn't really do anything wrong here. It doesn't seem like, like they developed him. They've, they've invested in him. They wanted him when Kentucky and some of these other blue buds didn't, um, you know, like there is something about loyalty, but there's also just something about, you know, sticking with where you're at. And, and it's not like he can't profit or benefit from being that. So it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Derek, uh, that, that you'd potentially ruin that or change that. Like it's, it's again, it's his, his career and he can do w- whatever he wants. I'm not arguing against that. It's just, I don't think it'd be the best move for him to be honest with you. I would agree with that. I, I would have this, the same perspective. And um, again, he, he's getting advice from, from people that are around him. And I, I think up to this point uh, in hindsight, he, I don't know if he'd tell you this right now, but he, he's had some, maybe some missteps and we can't sit here and say that, you know, he couldn't go to Kentucky and it would work out for him and he have a great year and all, and all that. But I do think that legacy is something that he would be sacrificing and how much does that mean to him? I mean, there's a, a mural painted of him in Jamaica wearing the Illinois, the Illinois gear. So uh, yeah, I think that that is something that matters to a lot of people. We know that IO was someone that it mattered a lot to how you're going to be remembered at that place. And um I thought that Kofi and Curbelo were, were pretty tight and were pretty darn well in the pick and roll. And uh, again, I, I don't, I don't get it personally either. Uh, I, maybe I would understand having some conversations just with, you know, what is you, you can't as a coaching staff facilitate, obviously the, the NIL agreements or anything, but if the, would it make sense for him to have some talks with other places and say, what are you expecting NIL to look like there? What do you, I don't know, but with Illinois, as far as like how they use them, how they developed and what the situation looks like, the comfortability with the campus and, and the team and everything, like Illinois makes all the sense in the world. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I, I can understand like wanting to be wooed at that level, like even a higher level than you got wooed in, in high school and, and see what you're worth with NIL now. Uh, but it just, I, it seems like such a good deal, deal here at Illinois, Joey, any final thoughts? I just wonder one Derek blew my mind at the thought of Kofi, like taking official visits. Like in my head, that stopped after. Like I know it doesn't stop, right? After like if you're in the portal, but like it just kind of that just really for whatever reason blew my mind conceptually there. But if I'm Illinois and I don't know how far along they can pitch, but to their credit, they were ready to rock at midnight, the, you know, this morning with NIL. And I would say, look, we've got all these things in place in terms of you know we we've educated you on this, 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 and this. We have open doors and. and Look, open doors is not specific to Illinois, but Illinois seems to really be embracing that. And if I'm them, I, if I can, if it's within the rules, I, there's so many different, I'm sure there's rules that we don't even like consider, 
but I, you know, you've got to take stock of, of Illinois being prepared on that front. And, and if you, you've seen some of his teammates, Trent Frazier, Andre Curbelo, it did not take them long to get set up on this. And, and I think there is an appetite. And I think there's really, really an appetite for Kofi and just like there is for the other two uh, and beyond them. So I don't know. It, it is hard for me to imagine turning on a college basketball game next year and seeing Kofi elsewhere. But I guess you could say the same about a lot of guys who have transferred out, right? I mean, uh, you could call West Virginia and they, you know, maybe not she, maybe that's not the best example, but, but you could call anywhere and, and they'd be like, yeah, it was strange. So I don't, this is weird. The official visit thing really kind of put it in like a, whoa, like this is really potentially a thing. Yeah. And, and it's to the point, Derek, where, where this guy, right? One of the best big men ever in Illinois history. Illinois just can't be like, nah, screw it. No, screw him. We're moving on. Like this guy is the, like if he comes back, you're a top 10 preseason team, right? You go from unranked in the preseason bowls to probably top 10, at least top 15. Um, so like this, you, you have to see this through, like you can't not let him go. Now we'll get to another topic here coming up about other options, but you have to pursue him. You can't just be like, all right, you don't want us. Don't worry about it. We're, we'll move on. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. And you're maybe going to have some conversations that you almost are annoyed with that. I mean, you're definitely going to be annoyed that, you, that you're having to have them as far as selling that guy on coming back to your program. Like what do you got to sell? Like, <laughs> it's like, what are we done? You've been like, here. Uh, <laughs> we still got Fletch here. Uh, Corbello's still here. We still are on the pick and roll. He still lobs it up pretty well. Um, <laughs> and we're still planning to win a lot of games. Uh, but yeah, like Joey said, and I was, can you imagine a, a tweet comes out, Kofi Coburn on an official visit to LSU and yes. he's walking around with Adam. Like, yes, yeah, so you could yeah. imagine that exactly, but it would just be like, this is what the future of college sports is going to look like potentially. Like it's not going to happen to everybody, but there will be just these, you never would have thought some kind of guy with that star power, that much success in one spot would just look elsewhere. If you were to come back to school, it's just kind of mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he would be, he'd be the biggest starter. I mean, Marcus Carr has been the number one guy, right? And it's like, that's a big deal for Minnesota, but Minnesota wasn't a good team. They were only competitive because of him, but like Kofi Coburn's another level. Sorry, Joe. No, no. I just want to, like, I, I thought about this earlier. So the news broke at about four, but can you imagine, I mean, just as Derek said, the star power and, and it feels like, you know, Kofi, I, like they're entrenched at, at Illinois. You imagine just if you're a coach and assistant, you just pull up the transfer portal before you check Twitter hmm. and you just scroll across and it's Kofi. Like, what do you think? Like th that is give you, that guy a call. That's what I would do. Yeah, you give him. But if, at what point are you like, wait a minute, what? Like it, that's just how. Like none of us saw it coming, and not none of a lot of people saw it coming. Like, people who haven't tweeted about Illinois since 2005 were like, "What in the world is going on here?" Like th that's just kind of the, you know, this as we start to piece this together, it's just kind of the the magnitude of of one tweet. Yet nowadays is a double edged sword. It cuts one way and cuts the other. When we come back, let's talk about how it's cutting potentially a positive way for Illinois basketball. That's next. All right, Derek Piper, like Illinois is potentially losing uh, one of these potential pros, a guy who worked out at, at NBA camps, um, but they could add one as well. So like Illinois fans who you can't really complain about it on one end and then complain, you know, rave about it on the other end. Dawson Garcia is a heck of a player, a former McDonald's All-American, and he was just on the Illinois campus, and Marquette lost him after one year where he was great for them, uh, and obviously he's got a higher ceiling, looked really good at the G League camp, looked better than Kofi at the G League camp, obviously a different player, but what can you tell us about Illinois and its pursuit of, of Dawson Garcia? Obviously a good thing that he was on campus. Yeah, a really stealthy first visit for him after in the transfer portal last Friday and was at a G League camp actually going up against Kofi uh, in some instances during that five-on-five -five run. Saw a nice mid-range jumper that he hit because, look, he can drive by the the bigger big guys. You got to give him a step. And he does have really soft touch with the, the lefty stroke. So uh, six foot 11, can stretch the floor, can put it on the deck, uh, is really in that mold of a four man that, that would make a lot of sense. He can play some five. Uh, but he is only 225 pounds or, or around that. So it uh, makes sense as a, as a taller four, skilled, 
Uh, love what he could do with Andre Curbelo as far as like picking pops and just these different variations of the offense where a big man has to, you have to account for, you know, he's not going to roll to the rim every single time. Not that Kofi wasn't darn elite or, or unstoppable a lot of times being able to do that, but uh, Illinois getting that first visit, Chester Frazier has been the lead on him. Illinois is known about Dawson Garcia being an option for a little while here and they've been prepared for it. So uh, them being able to get him on campus is a big deal. Uh, he's now, or was, yeah, he's still in Chapel Hill as of this recording tonight. Uh, and it, it sounds like it's going to be Illinois or North Carolina. Uh, that's uh, as of now, it seems like it's going to come down to those two. Obviously that kind of scares you a little bit as far as the blue blood com competition, but uh, he would be a heck of a piece. He, you know, him and Omar Payne in that front court with Coleman Hawkins involved as well. Uh, that would be pretty darn nice. Yeah, Joey, I was just thinking about losing. You knew you were going to lose Io, but if you lose Adam Miller and Kofi Coburn and you rebound with Omar Payne, Alfonso Plummer, Dawson Garcia, that's a pretty good pivot right there if they were able to land that. That is probably one of the better outcomes that you can have by losing two All-Americans and a four-star you know, recruit in Adam Miller, who I thought played really well as a freshman given the role he was asked to play. So, it, you know, it's July 1st. The roster still seems like there. it could look, or at least feel, I mean, it's only going to look a couple of different ways, we think, at this point. But it could feel quite a bit different by August 1st, September 1st. It's college basketball. Uh, Derek, before we go, uh, I do want to envision a front court of if Dawson, Gar if Dawson Garcia can come here. Um Listen, it, it, somebody asked me, Austin Berkland asked me, he's, he's always got the radio producer. He's like, would you rather have co a front court of Kofi and Georgie or Dawson Garcia and Omar Payne? And, and you'd include Coleman Hawkins in that. And I said, I think you can do more things with Dawson Garcia and Omar Payne. You're more flexible. Garcia can go off the bounce. You're longer. You know, you can change things. You're more versatile defensively. But I said, if you're telling me Kofi Coburn, like I know what he is and nobody can match up with him. Yes, Loyola was able to, to game plan around Illinois and, and around his weakness in that pick and roll and blitz IO, but like no other teams were really doing that. So I, I would do that. But like you are, if you were able to have Garcia, Coleman Hawkins and Payne, that's a long, athletic, versatile, skilled front court that I think Brad would love playing with those chess pieces. Yeah, it absolutely is. And you do got to go with Kofi and you got to pick just his dominance and really two way impact. And, and just think about his rebounding, his rim protection. Uh, that's something that you know, Garcia would not be able to. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's a decent rebounder, led Marquette with about six and a half rebounds per game. But uh, rim protection wise, I know Payne's going to bring bring some of that. Uh, but we're talking about Omar, who averaged like three points a game and, and not a guy that spins someone you dump it down to in the post. Versatility-wise, there's no question that Dawson is that piece that you've been looking for. Uh, he is really the mold or, or the finished product, uh, relative to say, to what you'd hope that Coleman Hawkins is going to become. Like you want Coleman to be what Dawson Garcia has been to this point, as far as you know, putting the ball on the floor and all of that. Uh, how about dream a little dream and go Dawson Garcia and Kofi together? <laughs> Let's talk about it. Who's better than Illinois if you got Kofi is a starting five and Omar behind him and Dawson is your starting four and Coleman behind him. What are the, what are the odds of that, Derek? Like <laughs> two, two percent there. Or like what, what are the odds there? Uh, that's a good question. I could say we'll see, but I, I got grilled a little bit on that, on the, uh, on the forums. So I, I won't say that. Confidence <laughs> meter of Garcia and Coburn on the same team, Derek, give us a number. Dang it. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. A, I don't know. 0.5, one. one. I'm clear at this point. Uh, yeah, three. Ooh, three. Oh, man. Wow, that's higher. Not you. You are leaving us with. I do not oh. want to get on the boards. <laughs> oh, no, man. If, if you get one of those guys, but if you get Garcia or Coburn, like your odds of being in Big Ten contention in the final two weeks, Derek. Through the I way better. Like right now, I expect this team to go through a lot of non-conference struggles and then during conference play to be solid, right? Like that's kind of what I envision with this team. Garcia or Coburn or both of them, obviously, uh, would significantly change it to where I think they can 
be as good as maybe two years ago that they were maybe not as good as last year, but, you know, be in the running and be in contention in the final weeks. Yeah. You, you would have a chance to be really darn good, especially I mean, that front court would be spectacular. You would need Austin Hutcherson to, to be able to step up because there'd be some, some pieces in that backcourt to, to fill in, obviously for IO Kerbella will be fantastic. Um, I, I'm just, yeah. I mean, you would be right up there with Purdue. I mean, maybe even the, the favorite in the Big Ten and a chance to go on a on a, on a nice run there with, with I mean just a McDonald's All American and Garcia uh, a guy who's an All American college this past year and Kofi uh, I, I am just thinking about you guys getting me in trouble throwing out a number though I see I, I was just gonna <laughs> stick with the we'll see uh, but there's a chance there's a chance even, even if it's Please. just Garcia like even if it was just yeah. Garcia or just Coburn like I think you go from I'm picking them six, seven in there, eight. Some people might have them at. So if they get one of those guys back, I, I think I'd have them in the top five. Right. Yeah. I, I would obviously agree with that. And I mean, Maryland not getting more sell back, uh, that hurts them a little bit. Uh, Dwayne Washington not going back to Ohio State. Michigan's going to be really young, very talented. Um, but yeah, as far as the Big Ten goes, you, you'd be really high on that list and, and nationally. I do agree. I mean, if you got both of them back, you would be, I think, and I have to maybe do some more digging. You'd probably be a preseason top five team, I, I would imagine. Yeah, I was referring to Big Ten. Yeah, top, yeah. By the way, I think you knew that. Uh, Joey, Derek, any thoughts? Joey, final thoughts here? Crazy day. What a day. <laughs> what a day. I, I we got lots to talk about while the fireworks are going or you're grilling out, chilling <laughs> by the pool, you know, conversation starters. What 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 an offseason for Illinois basketball. And I still feel like Illinois basketball will be fine at the end of it. Like I I it's weird. Like you know, you've Brad has rebounded, he's dealt with it, he's a tough son of a you know what. Uh he's he's mentioned that before. It feels like you know, these assistants are recruiting pretty well. Like I know there's still a lot to play out and you know, going from one seed thinking you're going to be a final four team to losing all the assistants, losing Adam Miller, losing Kofi Coburn. Like I don't want to belittle any of that, but it they still got Andre Cabello. They still got Brad Underwood. They get Trent Frazier, Demonte Williams back. I, I, I hate being like, Hey, everything's going to be fine. Like obviously things could be a lot better Derek, but like, I still feel like they're rebounding. Like they're finding, like if they get Garcia, what a rebound that would be. Yeah. They have had, they've had answers so far. I mean, Garcia is not on board or anything like that. And pulling him away from North Carolina would be really tough. We have seen in the past, the only basketball has just been able to, part of their success has been pivoting from when they get told no and, and being able to find a way. And Brad has shown that he's been able to do that. Uh, if they're able to figure this out with Garcia or not getting Kofi back, if he does return to college, uh, obviously that would be a big deal. And Hey, we went an entire podcast, not mentioning the third assistant. <laughs> this off season has gone way too crazy and way too much going on, but it's, it's something to talk about. Three months of that assistant stuff, by the way. I think I think Josh Whitman calmed everybody down just a little bit. Uh, and I, I think we know uh, that's going to happen soon, just not as soon as we all would have liked. All right, Derek Piper, Joey Wagner. Thank you, boys. That was fun.